We will see in this video how to perform a seismic analysis using time step integration. For that, we need to import seismic events, which is usually given as a table of acceleration versus time. But we need to transform this curve into another table giving impulse displacement versus time. For that, we can use this tool where we define a new table name and the original uh, displacement or velocity at the beginning. That will create a new table that where we can see the impulse displacement that will be given at the different support of the bridge, the abutment and the piers. These are the different variables that we will use to define the load case and the load that we apply for the seismic analysis. For that, we need to define some load set. So first, we have mass load set, the self-weight, self-mass of the different elements, and the superimposed dead load given as mass on the top of the bridge. Then we define unit impose displacement. So, for example, here we impose displacement as a different spring support for abutment and piers. So this is an and displacement imposed and displacement of the element in one direction as a unit. We can input that in the X and Z, for example, for longitudinal and transversal seismic analysis. Then, when we have that, we can define the different load case. So the load case that we use takes uh, the different mass load case, but the displacement is multiplied by a variable here, var t1 dot this. And if we look at the definition of this variable, this variable is just looking inside our table, the table that we have created of displacement, versus the time. The time can be reduced by a t start, which is the starting of our phase. So at each time, it will impose the displacement that it is given in the table. Now let's go to the schedule action. In the schedule action, we define an action tint. For this, we define the reference load case, the total time of analysis, and the type of output we want. We can have an envelope that will give the maximum and minimum displacement of forces in the different elements, or we can have a type of video that will create a small video showing the bridge under the seismic event. And we store this video into an AVI file. Then we can finally, uh, before we have to define in the tint an RM set that will display uh, the different nodes that we want to track, for example, for either uh, the displacement or, for example, in this case, under this RM set, which is of tint uh, type, we track, for example, uh, the variation of the moment in these different elements at specific nodes, limited to three or six different values so we can see them on the screen. And when we perform the analysis, here we can see on the screen the variation of the different moment that we wanted to store for different elements. So usually representing uh, elements in the deck or elements in the peers. And we can see this different variation all along the analysis knowing that these maximum values here will be stored for each element in our envelope file. We can perform this analysis in x direction, in z direction, and adding this, we have the maximum uh, values for the envelope. In the video, we can see uh, how that it looks for the bridge under this seismic event. Here we have multiplied the effect by 10, so we can really see uh, what happens to the bridge, even if it's not exactly the reality. After that, we can uh, do envelope and also uh, combinations of this uh, seismic events with other loads to design the bridge.